Now, depending on the procedure that you've just completed, you could have one of or all of these items uh, on your table. So chair side, some of these items are going to be reprocessed here, and then some of these are going to actually be brought to your sterilization area for complete sterilization. So chair side, we would be doing disinfecting to uh, things that did not touch mucous membranes, and then uh, sterilization would be handling anything that did come in contact with a mucous membrane or transferred from that. So uh, first off, let's just talk about the irrigation tank. Uh, this would be applicable only to the T5XS uh, or any of the units that have an irrigation tank. So if you're using any medicaments in here, you're going to want to remove the tank, dump out the medicaments, put tap water in or some fresh water. All right, you'll move this knob here to the little button with the, uh, the little space with the arrow, okay? And then, so you'll just spin it accordingly. Once you've done that, you're going to want to take the tip off. Now, keep in mind, this tip is just been used, so treat it accordingly. At this point in time, you will step on the pedal with this end pointing at some sort of a receptacle, whether that's gonna be a trash can or uh, a sink, but we're going to flush the medicaments out of the line. You don't need that much water. Uh, really, just a, a finger's worth of water in here would do fine, so half the amount that you see here. Uh, and that's just going to flush the line and flush everything through. Once that's done, you'll just go ahead and move this off. Uh, and at that point in time, you will have what basically looks like this, a uh, setup that has just tap water and we're ready to go. So let's go from there now. In this particular situation, you're going to take your tip in your wrench and you're going to either put it in your uh, reprocessing kit that comes with the machine or some sort of a CDC uh, guideline meeting container, whether that is a, a tray with a lid, but you need to have some sort of a hard-sided lid container to transport it to your Steri Center. The other thing you might be doing is you may be putting the tips back into something that looks like this. Uh, both of those are possible, but either way, we need to get the tip and the wrench to your Steri Center. The next thing we're going to do is process this. So that'll go to the Steri Center. These as well will go to the steric center. These are all items that have come in contact with uh, soft tissue, uh, mucous membrane, uh, either directly or indirectly. Okay, this wrench here is another thing that if you use this wrench, you would want to take that to your sterilization area. So basically, these items here go to the sterilization area. Here, we can process uh, directly at the chair. So what we have here is you have your tank, you have your knob, and you have your uh, dial selection knob for your power. This can be removed, this can be removed, and this can be removed. Uh, it's best to pull this straight up and push it straight down. Do not turn, it can kink the O-rings. You'll go ahead and you'll dump out the tap water, or dump out whatever water you're using. And then this whole surface area, this knob, this knob, this lid, and this container can be wiped down with a disinfectant wipe. Now you'll want to make sure that you follow the manufactured recommendations for the wipe. So if your wipe has a kill time of 60 seconds, you'll want to make sure that the surface stays wet for 60 seconds. vessel itself inside and out you wipe all of this down and now we'll leave this off to actually let it dry but now we're going to want to go ahead and 
once we've processed this, take this to your sterilization area and we're going to uh, sterilize that. This has been disinfected. This can now be sterilized. One other thing too, we'll go ahead and disinfect the tubing. So just run your tuber like so. Be mindful not to get any liquids in here. If you do get liquids in here, or for example, the back end, just go ahead and take your syringe and you'll just blow out to make sure that you don't have any water that accumulates in there uh, because it could interfere with the connections when you put them together. So let's go ahead and sterilize. All right, so we're here in the Steri Center and these are the items we brought in. Now let's talk about what we can and cannot do with some of these. So there are some of these items that we cannot put into an ultrasonic or an instrument washer. That would be the handpiece itself. The handpiece is actually made up of a few different components. You have your nose cap, you have your light guide, and you have your LED light ring. And of course you have the body of the handpiece. So the body of the handpiece, the light guide, and the light ring, these three items cannot be placed into an instrument washer or an ultrasonic. Uh, what an instrument washer and an ultrasonic do is to simply free the different items of debris. So they're cleaning, that's a cleaning step. So we are still going to wanna to clean that. You can hand clean this uh, in the sink. You're gonna to wanna to brush it off. Um, all of these items, we need to make it free of debris before we autoclave them. But these cannot go into an ultrasonic. These cannot be submerged. The nose cone can be submerged and go into an ultrasonic or an instrument washer. The wrench and the tip can. Your uh, little holders for your handpiece, those can. And then of course, finally, your flat wrench, your metal um, tip holder, and your cassette. So, uh, I would personally not submerge this in an ultrasonic. Uh, this would best be used to kind of rinse it off and make it free of debris. But everything you see right here can go into your ultrasonic. All right. So let's just say that uh, these have gone in and have all of these items have now been uh, processed either through an ultrasonic or an instrument washer. And now we're at the next step, which is uh, moving it to sterilization. From here, we have a few different ways that we can do that. One, you can have the tips, up to six tips, sitting in this. This whole thing can be pouched, right? And put into the autoclave, like so. Or you can keep the tips inside of the wrench here. This can go into here and either you use a large bag, such as this one, or you can wrap it, uh, but you can have up to four wrenches with tips. You can also put the handpiece itself back in here and put this in. If you didn't want to use this, so let's just say you're using a smaller statum or an autoclave that might not fit this, what you would do is you would put the following items like so. So go ahead and put your wrench in a bag. Go ahead and put these in a bag. And then our manufactured stated guidelines states that these four components would be placed individually within the bag. Uh, I will say that if you're not careful, as many people tend to overfill an autoclave, these prongs can be bent. In that case, I think it's not a bad idea to go ahead 
and just slide it in like so, so those prongs can't be bent. And then you can put the rest of it in the bag like so, or you can go ahead and loosely assemble them and place them in the cassette. And then this cassette itself can be placed in the large bag and autoclaved. But what we have here are the wrench, the holders, the tip kit, which could have your tips in it. And then of course, um, your round wrench with tips in it and your uh, handpiece in this pouch set up here. These are all items that would go into an autoclave. Um, these should go into a uh, either a vacuum autoclave, such as let's just say a Saikan um, Bravo, or a um, steam pressure autoclave like an M11. Uh, I would not suggest putting these all into a, um, a dry heat autoclave or uh, really wet sterile. So cold sterile, you definitely do not want to submerge that. So these should all really go into like either an M11, a Statum or a Bravo or something of that nature.